One of the most effective ways to learn bouldering movement is to watch and learn from climbers that are stronger than you. Another really effective way to understand how your body is moving in space is video analysis, so that's exactly what we're combining in today's analysis video. I enlisted performance coach Robin to analyse the differences between me, an intermediate climber climbing in the V6 to V7 bracket, and Alex Puccio, a professional climber and 11 times national champion who's bouldered up to V14, to see what we could learn from comparing our approaches and methods on boulders in the gym. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So something that you use a lot in your coaching is video analysis. I've had a couple of sessions with you now and yep. I feel like video analysis plays a big part in the way that you analyse movement and help your clients to understand what it is that they're doing on the wall. For sure, yeah. So today we're going to do the same. You're going to get like a snapshot of what we deliver. Mm -hmm. But I always find it fascinating, like Alex has said, uh, as well, you can learn so much from yeah. everybody. We'll learn from you, you can learn from us, but being able to see how two kind of similar height people, women, climb yeah. the problems so differently yes. is always amazing. You're gonna have your default style, Alex's gonna have hers, yeah. and both of you will have strengths and weaknesses that we can just pick apart. Looking at this, I immediately feel a lot like... More comfortable. More safe. <laughs> nice. Um, but I think it's perhaps going to bring out some of my uh, less than ideal inefficient habits. Nice. But it'll be interesting to see your take yeah, on this. Yeah, let's see. I'm excited. Come on. Nice, Hannah. Come on. Come on, Hannah. Oh, no. oh, that's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, good job. It was lovely before that. What do you think you'll do differently second go? To be honest, I don't even remember which hand was where. Like. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I was left. So you obviously yeah from, rocked over, and it's a big deep underneath lock. Underneath this. And you rolled over. So that hold, now you know. It's like slopey with a little slopey lip, right? The rollover got a lot of elbows involved and I was like, this, this top hold was not as nice as I was hoping. Not as nice, no. So as soon as I was like out, I was out. So if you were to go for the same way again, what can give you more control? What do you need to do Possibly. differently? Yeah. Oh gosh. I did half consider trying to get a high right foot, but that might yeah. be a bit... Bit too much. You may push your bum out. How do you feel on the left hand? Fine. I just, as soon as I start trying to move off it, yeah. it then becomes a bit like unstable. Do you unstable. think you could get it? Because obviously it's a deep lock for you, but you got it. Do you think then you could come low and drive again? So and go left again. Exactly. Nice. I could, come yeah, on, Hannah. We should try, try it. We can it. try that. Come on. If you're going for the rock, the crossover, we need a lot more stability in your lower body because as you went, yes, your elbow's coming in. Come on, but everything collapsed. Good, yeah. so you came away from the wall. Yeah. Come on, Hannah. Woo! Weigh them out. Which one do you prefer? That felt more stable. Yeah. But it felt like I didn't, maybe my shoulder wasn't strong enough to you. So if we look at the hold you hit, where did you hit that last hold? Kind of in the hmm, slightly left in the middle. <laughs> yeah, you're, so you're, you're actually to the right here. So you hit it here and you're sliding um, up. And you read it, and I think it's correct, because we've got this left to right slope. I reckon you, you read it well in terms of you can get a lot of handover, yeah. which is going to stop either. this fall. But you went this side, which means that you're just going to be fighting that. We need the good directional force. Yeah. So I think you can do that, but you just need to come a little bit lower, drive with your legs, and then be prepared with your shoulders. Problem number two is this pink. It has the number on it, but what are you thinking? Yeah. Are you just gonna well, think, think less, feel more? Think less, feel more. But obviously yeah. there are only feet over on your right side and you're going up right hand to these two pink rails. But the feet are quite good and they're big, so really want to sink your hips over to the right to keep the balance on that. And I think at one point, I'm probably going to need to get my left foot up on one of the starting holds to do one of the, the last two moves. And do, you, do you read, uh, interestingly, yeah. do you read the first move dynamically or like no, I, would, I think there's a, there's, well, I think there's an in-between. 
okay. like there's not it's not a dyno and no, no. I don't really like there's so much staticking if I don't have to because I think it's a waste of energy to just like do a walk off and pull up versus being a little bit more umph or slight dynamic motion with it. Momentum yeah. is like what I momentum. want to call it. Yeah. Using momentum to get it and get to stay locked off when you get there. So use momentum to get to the hold, but you don't need to be dynamic. And um, one more question. I know you, you didn't like to think as much, but for the last section. I don't know what you're trying to say there. I'd like to know, <laughs> I'd like to know what, how you're reading the last move. Not to the lip, but just to the hole before, the penultimate. Well, move, I think I there's two options. Yeah. You can either cross or bump again. I think if I'm looking at it, I might cross and then match and then go to the top, or I could bump again if the right hand feels really good, but the right hand is going to be more of a guest stone. In a competition, I would have probably used the hold just for security reasons. Doing just a session to flash it, I felt very comfortable, and I knew I was going to do the move. So yeah. then, so in a in this sense, without anyone else watching, scenario, just be myself. Yeah. I would have skipped it. In a competition, I wouldn't have skipped the hold. What do you think? So obviously, you saw that. Can you hear? Sorry. Hello. I could. I think. I could climb it again if you want to make to see the difference. I think that for me, part of the issue at the top is feeling, it's like controlling the momentum that I'm putting behind the move. And maybe I would have to generate a bit more, like put a bit more behind skipping the hold. However, if I could eliminate a move. How about I, how about I climb it again and see what you're, and I want to feel what you're saying because it could be that if I just went for that, you could maybe not be keeping enough tension on the left toe, driving through the hip. So when you hit it, you're coming out and the hips need to be staying. Even when I'm doing a big move, I had tension that foot that kept my hips into the wall because the hole's not that good. So if I lost tension, I would have fallen off of it. I'd also love to see you do two things. One, the left, left again. Le what? Yeah, as in left, left, left again. Okay, but not I'd, left cross. No, I'd also like to see you cross, because that was Hannah's Let's do instinct. the cross first. I'm going to not skip, hit the left cross. cross. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Signature move with signature. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, if I win a comp. She goes like that. I remember the last World Cup that I won in 2018. It was like, it was a really cool moment, and then I uh, was standing on the podium, and I looked at my mom, you know, I was standing on there and the, the anthem's playing, I looked at my mom and she started crying and I was like, I'm gonna cry now. And I had to like quickly look away and I like felt my eyes like watering. I was like, no, no, I'm not gonna do it. Do you sing the national anthem? Do you know the national anthem? Today's session with Robin and Alex has kindly been sponsored by Squarespace, who we've been loving working with this year to host our website. I usually talk about how we love Squarespace for our commerce business, but today I wanted to talk you through some of the features that I love to use to keep my love for writing alive. Over on hannahmorrisbouldering.com, I love to keep a blog of my experiences and thoughts, and it's really become just a little space for me to practice my writing and find a creative outlet that's not video production. What I do love though is that I can keep things really visually creative with options to embed high quality photography and my YouTube videos and also link out to our web shop. I really love having the option to express myself through the medium of writing but to have it look beautiful So too. I'm going to put you under pressure, down climb and then do the left left again. So if you're thinking you might like to start your own blog, I'd really recommend it as a fun and creative way to share your thoughts. You can head to squarespace.com forward left, slash Hannah Morris and then when you're ready to launch your own website or domain, use code Hannah Morris for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Honestly, the easiest was the cross. I spotted that you dropped the left foot yeah. off. And to I also took underneath. my pinky off to drag because then it just like, and those are not things I think about. Those are the nuances yeah. that like, I don't plan that stuff. That's my body taking over. Okay. Come on, Hannah. Good. Come on. No. And like those holes, they're like 30 and they have low 
Come on, Hannah. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yes. Like really strong. Come on. Come on, go for it. It's a joke. Go. Come on, Hannah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know. I just want you to try and see what it looks like. The very, just the first move. Going, going with momentum to it. Rather than doing your like, yeah. I just, I just want to see. I think it'd be really good for you just to do it. You do it, and then you do it immediately after. Okay, so follow you. Just more dynamic. So Alex is going to do the first move, and in like typical Alex fashion, she's using momentum. She's driving with her legs and her hips. But we've seen Hannah do that first move in a really kind of defensive, locky way, which is throwing away a lot of energy. So now we're going to just try and see Alex do it, and then Hannah replicate it. That was better. And that, that's like, at the moment, like we'll see in the, the analysis, it's kind of outside of the toolbox right now. But if that starts to become your norm, you'll get there in a split second rather than yeah. locking. And it's the same for the second last move. You lock rather than use momentum. Yeah, I feel like this is the same, like with lots of technique things, you try it and you're like, that feels so much harder. I'm having to think sure. about it so much more. It doesn't feel natural, Yeah. but that's fine. Like. The idea is that you drill it in so much that exactly. it like eventually overtakes the less efficient Second way of doing things sure. and it becomes natural. And if you think back to those sessions you have with B, yeah. and she immediately is like, you need to be twisty and turning. Now, when you see you climb, you obviously understand those mechanics. You try and be really efficient. And sometimes you have to be in this position, this transitional position. This is awkward, but it creates power. So right. that wraps up the climbing section of this video. I feel like there's a lot to go away and dissect, so that is exactly what we're going to go and do. We're going to take all the footage that we have collected and input it into the rope supercomputer yeah. <laughs> to try and figure out uh, some of the core differences and some of the key learning points. And what we're going to do is look at your first attempt and then compare your successful attempt with Alex's su yeah. successful attempt. Um, I yeah. Say what you see when you you do this. So the first move, you've placed your foot yeah. high. Immediately, I don't know if this is perhaps it, we can discount this, but because um, I can see Alex's start position on the next clip that's about to be played. Yeah. Immediately, my left foot is quite a bit further from the wall yeah. than Alex is, so the initial start position is less like tucked. And if that makes yeah. sense. And also, I'm using a different foothold. You've gone for the high one. So when you first pulled on, I yeah. thought that was interesting because you've got this big, huge foothold. Yeah. What was your logic in going high foot? I think that I had identified that the next right hand, like kind of Gastony crimp was quite a way away. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to eliminate, uh, or I was trying to shorten the distance between the two because I think I was trying to play to my own strengths of feeling quite comfortable on a lock yeah. and feeling that I am also uh, maybe a little better at rock overs than other areas of my climbing. So I, or like, especially on a heel, which is what I opted for. Yeah. feel like I can really like pull in on a heel. So I just was trying to, yeah, make that distance feel a little shorter with something that felt comfortable for me. So closer to the goal. Mm -hmm. So like you said, like Alex will always refer to people of having their strengths, strengths and weaknesses, but one of them, she'll always say, you have your superpower and you've identified yours perfectly. So as we play it, you go into this strength of yours and you're very comfortable in locking down to your shoulder, rocking over like you said and keeping your hips fairly close to the wall and then obviously reaching to this end goal. Mm -hmm. So it's a very static move. And obviously yeah. yesterday we looked at, after you've done the climb, we looked at making that more dynamic using less energy. Yeah. Okay, so when you hit it, what do you do? Really like pull the right hip over that rock over position and it looks like I kind of twist my like underneath my right arm to try and make the space here to get further over right. Yeah, it's um, like a really impressive position. You've done like the textbook rock over and right now what I find massively interesting why you do that twist is your whole left hand side of the body is when I say off the wall, it's not on a hold. Mm -hmm. So it's you're prone to this barn door, but you've corrected that by sucking your hips so close mm -hmm. to the wall, flagging and dragging that left leg, 
So as you twist, you can come into this uh, to match the hold. You're in a good half crimp, you're very mm -hmm. good at that, and then obviously you bounce straight back up. So all of that was fairly efficient. You're right mm -hmm. under the hold, you've got that directional force that we talk about, and now we're into, I guess, your crux move. So again, you go for the high foot. Yeah, I think I repeated the same thing again, or the same idea again. It's like, I can make use of the high foot to get myself closer, maybe with the, maybe possibly with the idea of bumping in mind. Yeah. And that didn't feel right when I got there for my first attempt, but I think it was probably playing into my thoughts a little bit. Yeah, so in this position here, just before we set off, you've got your hand set up, your left foot's on the high one, you're eyeing up the goal, and your foot is on, your right foot is on. So you've got fairly straight arms, you're in a great position to go. Now, immediately, you do the classic, you lock off so deeply, and then you, you reach up. So again, quite a defensive move. But your hips are quite close to the wall. Now let's look at this move. So you, like you said, you got there and you didn't feel like bumping was an option. Mm -mm. So you're matching your feet or right foot underneath and you flag wide. So right now, a stable position. You've got a fairly stable base, your hips are close to the wall and you're opting for the rollover. I think it maybe looks like that left hip is starting to rotate in the same way that we saw on the yellow one yeah. where I'm kind of like okay I'm going for it like I might be off I'm not gonna like maybe fully commit to like holding on with everything I've got and I'm kind of half anticipating the I'm gonna come off this way and I'm gonna land down there yeah I'm not yet looking but like you said direction. you thought maybe you could get away with yeah. this top hold thinking it was gonna be better than it is and now here we see you at that kind of dead point Banana. position and it's really obvious that your left leg now has left the wall. Yeah. Your body or your core has collapsed because you're pushing your body away from the wall. And now trying to grab a sloper rather than being right underneath it, as yeah. you know, that's the best place to be with a sloper. You're coming away from the wall. Mm -hmm. So at this position, it looks like maybe you could hold it, but now everything collapses. And it's yeah. quite a, a sudden move, but you're off that wall. The right foot stays on obviously, until the last second and yeah you have to yeah. go away I'm gone. so let's have a look at the next video so you sending and alex sending and i think we'll start with alex so this is something that we didn't see you do in your first one what leveling the, the hips like yeah so that. now she's got parallel people always drag that smearing leg mm -hmm. because they place it low and when your foot's low, you basically have no contact with the wall. You've got this scraping foot, so it, yeah. it doesn't do anything. It's, it's a stabilizer, and then it just drags. So Alex has brought it high, so She's you see this. using the wall as an as a additional foothold, basically, rather than just letting the... Exactly. So she's in this, she basically is right under the holds. Mm -hmm. She brings her foot high, so immediately you think, well, that's pushed your bum away from the wall, but you're in this transitional position where she's smearing, so she can actually get some contact with her foot and then you'll see her hips do this little sag and then fire up so her hips legs drive that move it's a very quick move so she's not really locking off a huge amount or not locking sure. and reaching she's using momentum mm -hmm. okay let's compare this is your obviously your sengo but let's compare this move so you can see again playing to your strengths and it is an incredible strength to have but it's very much more defensive like locking off Beautiful mm -hmm. rock over, like your hips are really close to the wall. Yeah. And you hit maybe the quarter lock. So sure. then you do this beautiful position. Again, twisting those hips. Your hips are as close mm -hmm. to the wall as possible. Quite similar. What do you see in, in terms of the difference in position? Alex looks a fair bit more compact. I'm a, a little wider in the base. Mm -hmm. um, Alex is also further to the right. Like, um, or just like straighter in general. I'm kind of like arms out here, legs out here in a kind of like inverted like C shape, I guess. Yeah. So she, Alex has brought her leg to the plumb line. So right. it's directly under the hold. She's flagged low, allowing right. her to match. The danger of your leg being slightly further out is it's got potential to swing to the mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So you're both under this position. You pop up. Alex goes to full crimp. Left foot on the lower one. She'll go full crimp and then she brings her foot high. Right foot goes to the higher hold. She sets up, so her hips are really close to the wall. She's 
got that directional force right under the hold. She's eyeing up what she's going to do. And I think in her head, she's thinking, I could be defensive and go for that crimp. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we know she goes the whole way. So you can see this explosive power. She sags low. She's wound up. Her foot, her, both her legs are ready to fire. And she goes the whole way. Her hips mm -hmm. go straight close to the wall. And yes, she's pulling, but she uses a lot of lower body for, uh, yeah. power. Let's see. Hannah Morris bouldering. Do you go for this like open hand and you go for your <laughs> lock and reach, foot comes in, but now you come straight underneath the hold. And it looks like you were gonna go for the, the cross three. Yeah. Any, any reason, can you remember why you didn't? I think as I was going through the motion of the move, I didn't feel super stable. So I opted to uh, climb a little hesitantly, I suppose, and because uh, I felt really comfortable on that crimp, I thought if I could match into it, turns out I g couldn't really get that much on it. It wasn't, I didn't really leave enough space, so then I ended up just kind of going for it. But uh, yeah, that was like a risk thing where I was like, I think that if I kind of allow myself time to reset by adding that additional point of contact, then I could feel more imbalanced and then go for the next move. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you look at when you come in and then you make the little pop move here, mm -hmm. you can see that obviously you need to raise your center of gravity. Mm -hmm. So you wind up and then you go for it. So that's how much more height we needed to gain. And mm -hmm. I think if you'd have done that at the same time, so you hit this hold and then you stand up and go, you'd yeah. be fine, but high risk. Yeah, sure. You kind of see me reach the end of my, get to the end of the my arm point, stretch yeah. and I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. I, I need to like reset and go, go a bit. Yeah, and I mean, it was the right thing for you to do in the moment. And then what's really cool is when you hit this next hold, you do a really cool intuitive movement. So your body comes away from the wall and you need to match. So you really counter flag. So you bring that left leg underneath you mm -hmm. so that your hip comes closer to match. Feet come high. A bit locky, but <laughs> nice, flamboyant. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, and then we'll just have a look at Alex's last uh, move. So she's made the powerful move. Mm -hmm. She's right underneath it, comes into the foothold, uh, the, the crimp, matches, and then fires off. So a, a bit yeah. faster. Mm -hmm. We have to kind of say that obviously Alex is going to have uh, a high level of strength. So proportionately, she's going to feel less stressed on these holds. So obviously, missing out those that hold that we talked about could have been that decision of going, well, I feel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not stressed at all. Mm -hmm.